Peer Network is an organization that I founded um, over 10 years ago. This is a safe space for people to come feel safe, where they can get education, where they don't get judged, um, and they get to build themselves up personally and professionally. Um, they build themselves up personally so that they, they are prepared when they go to work. We educate them, we train them in different aspects of harm reduction practice and principles. Um, we meet people where they're at. It's almost like when we meet people, no matter where they're at in their life, in their struggle, in their journey, we meet them, but we like to walk with them through that journey to wherever it is that they're trying to go. Our city took months before they even did anything for the homeless. They couldn't wash their hands. They couldn't take a shower. I mean, they they had nowhere to go. You know, and if you went to the shelter, you would get COVID. We teach them about harm reduction. We educate them. We want them to understand that we are there. We encourage them not to use alone. That's one of the most important things, not to use alone. We also give them the NACAN. We train them if they don't know how. We give them the fit to new script. And this is all reducing harm. And we give them love and we listen. Um, what does want to hear a person from a textbook? person always want to know about from your living experience that you've been through. I love my job and I love my harm reduction because I'm able to identify a lot um, and I'm able to understand them where they come from. Peer work is always said to have to be the backbone of harm reduction, backbone of the work, spearheaded of the agency. Without the peers, the agencies would not exist and would not be able to get this done or that done. The shame of it is that a lot of the peers are being exploited by the same entities that give them this praise. You're getting funds from us. You're getting millions of dollars from us to work and we have nothing to show for it. And it hurts, you know? <clears throat> because they forget to the people that actually brought you there, you forget them. That's not good. But that doesn't stop us from doing the work. <laughs> we continue to do the work. We did the work when it was COVID with no pay. We did the work and we would continue to do that to make sure that the participants are okay. The community is clean. We have to because nobody else is doing it. First of all, um, pay us a little bit more. <laughs> that, that's number one. Pay us. Um, the work that we do, um, just pay us a living wage. That's what we're asking, a living wage, you know? The amount of money that we get but for the work that we do, but in the work that we do, we put a lot of money in other people's pockets. Because with our, our data, they have nothing to write the funders. They have nothing to say to the funders, okay? We're the heartbeat of a lot of these organizations. But being that this is still the stigma that we have a past or what are we doing? Well, we, we give them anything and they'll do it. Or they see the passion that we have, take advantage of that. And that's what hurts the world, that's what I'm Trust us, believe us when we say certain things because we know what's going on out there in our community. And I feel they should value us much more.